naughty, touchy issue of security gets our attention next on the program here. Yeah. The House of Representatives and the Senate to the ask President Buhari to immediately employ the services of mercenaries to bring an end to the scourge of insecurity in the country. This is one of the recommendations by the House of Representatives in the Green Chambers as it joins the Senate to debate the killings of Nigerians in Plateau and Benue State by terrorists. Take a listen to the debate on the floor of the House. Why I blame the president? Why will you continuously maintain one national security advisor over all these years of your government? Why you maintain somebody who cannot be able to see outside the box or who believes in one particular tradition? I don't think we are going to get it correct. If the president means well to this country and if we are really trying to look for solution, he has to immediately sack the National Security Advisor. Two, he has to remove his Minister of Defense. Is our president aware of what is happening to the people of this country? Is he holding the strategic operational commandant responsible for the failure of the protection of life and properties of the people of this country? Mr. Speaker, who are the various security agencies that are supposed to protect the life of the people? Of course, the armed forces, the army, the air force, the police, the navy, call them. Mr. Speaker, we both vote money to these agencies every year, and we provide supplementary budget to these agencies. The cry of arms and ammunition, this hallowed chamber approved money to them. But we will be failing our constituents if we did not, as parliament, as a representative of the people, hold somebody accountable. Well, you heard how outraged some of the lawmakers are on this matter. Well, uh, we try to also crunch some facts and figure. In the last three days, take a look at what at the scenario, what has happened from Taraba State, where a district head of uh, Meizamari community in Taraba State was killed after government attacked a mosque in the Sudan local government area of the state. In uh, Benue State, about 23 locals killed in two communities of the state after an attack by some persons believed to be herders in Zamfara State. Five students of the College of Health, Science and Technology, SAFE, in Zamfara State were abducted. One of them escaped from the abductor suspected to be a bandit who invaded a residential area in SAFE town. This just in the last three days, between Monday and today. Let me take you, uh, give you an insight on what the Nigeria Security Tracker's report says. If three months, in the last three months, what has happened? Take a look at how many people they say they have been killed in violence and killings by some of these uh, notorious terrorists. 2,968 people killed. 1,484 people abducted. That is the very scary figures right there. Take a look at the breakdown of how many people involved in the different regions. In the northwest region, 1,103 deaths. In the north central, 984. In the northeast, 488. Southeast, 181. Southwest, 127. South, south, 85 people killed in violent killings and all of that. So the northwest region and the north uh, central region have become a hotbed of these killings in the last three months. So of, uh, all in all, 2,968 people killed, 1,484 people abducted just in three months. Let's get a sense of how we can we got here and how we can get out. I'm being joined by Honorable Adejo Radiogun, who joins us virtually from Lagos, a member of the House of Representatives. And also here in our studio here in Abuja is Air Commodore Darlington Abdullah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My great pleasure. Thank you. I don't know if Honorable Adeogun can hear me, but let me, because uh, you and your colleagues have done some pretty much deep work on how we got here, what the problems are. And some of your colleagues are already calling for the head on the sack of some heads of the security agencies. From your own standpoint, Honorable, what is going on? Um, good evening, and uh, thanks for having me on your program. Now to the question, what is going on? You've described what is going on. We're having situations of um, inability of the security agencies to actually provide security for Nigerians. Whereas the primary responsibility of government 
to provide security. We're failing as a nation to do what we should do, primarily provide the security for our citizens. That is the problem. That is the situation. So, I mean, that is in a philosophical tone, I mean, to describe what is happening. But in the practical, and I know you're a practical person, in terms of security, you've had this experience, and that's why I'm, I would like you to give us empirically what the problems really are. Uh, for example, uh, is there a failure of leadership in, in terms of leading the security agents or the agencies, or is there a lack of manpower or the equipment necessary, or is there a lack of money to prosecute this war against these terrorists that are disturbing our nation? What exactly is going on? I think the problem is multidimensional. We need to look at it from the long-term perspective and then the short-term problems. Um, for a very long time, we didn't train our security men to prepare for days like this. We didn't train the police to perform their functions. And then when trouble started, the military, you know, has to deal with insurgency, the Nazis, has to deal with banditry, and then now the military is performing and police duty. So the police have been relegated to a state in which they just basically do nothing other than to clap for the police. That is where our problem is starting from, that we didn't prepare for today. We don't have, we're not training our policemen. We're not even training the military adequately like, like they should do. I mean, I saw a video recently um, showing military men, you know, in an ongoing operation, and I didn't feel good with what I saw, because see, military men in the battlefront are being told how to duck from um, bullets and all that. It shows that they didn't have proper training. So the, the problem, we haven't gotten the foundation right. We haven't trained our men well, and then we're not providing for them the resources for which to, to do battle. We're not providing them with technology to hit them. And when you have to deal with terrorism, technology is vital. Technology is at the root of everything that you need to use for counterterrorism. So we don't have the right tools. We don't have, the, you know, we haven't trained the men. And then we do not have the number because the military having to do with the Nazis, the issues in the Northwest, North Central, and then even being used for police duties in the South, the military is overstretched. Now, unfortunately, let me come to the Abuja city. Unfortunately, we're in a state of war. Uh, if people of, of this number are being killed, I'm not certain how many people are being killed in Ukraine with a Russian invasion. And it's obvious that these terrorists have, are waging war on our people. Now, it's a difficult situation to start starting from the beginning uh, in, a, in a situation of war, but we need to start from somewhere. You are practically be on the field. How did we get here? Because Honorable has described that it is a multidimensional problem. But for you, what is the most, what's the perhaps the biggest problem in all of this? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think the biggest problem, like you said, is the fact that um, uh, one, we are not prioritizing security as um, a major issue that we need to address very seriously. Um, we also do not um, understand uh, the concept of security from what I've heard, even the, from the National Assembly. The, I mean, the, uh, the, discourse, the discourse we listened to a while ago, they obviously seem to heap all the blames on the armed forces and see other security agencies. It's well beyond that. Who I'll give be a blamed? typical example. Hmm. Um, now, uh, we have lost control of our youths because the criminal elements do not lack the youth to recruit into their various groups. There is an endless supply of you. That's why no matter how many you kill, they are ever, um, they, ha they have enough recruits, I mean, new recruits to, hmm. to take on. So what have we done wrong at that level? We have, um, like I keep saying, even at the primary and secondary school levels, we have, um, students or these children becoming members of cult groups now. I mean, previously we used to talk about university level, I mean, cult at the university level, and so, but it's gone down to primary school level. It, we have a situation now in which secondary school students, you know, not only have girlfriends, but they are killing the same girlfriends to, for money rituals, I mean, to make money 
they are more focused on money than academic uh, excellence. I mean, to to, to attain. Uh, In essence, level. there is a moral yeah, decadence. Yes, yes. you know, the moral decadence. You know, for the, the family values and so on. I mean, they are at the lowest at, the, at this point in time. So. If we do not shield these children, we do not focus, come up with programs that can um, change the mindset of these children, shield them away from the criminal element, elements, then the, 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 the inflow of the children into these criminal groups will continue. Because um, look at the, the kidnapping. They are more interested in making quick money than learning in, in, in their various schools. So all of these add up to greater problems mm. at the higher level. Now, uh, talking about the issues with the security services and all. we all know we have said it over and over like the honorable just said issues of manpower is one equipment but most importantly technology you cannot be operating blindly and think that you will succeed even if you line up like i keep saying line up the entire armed forces in particular areas maybe along the railroads and so on that wouldn't stop the uh, maybe the attacks taking place in, in some, because we, when you put them there, of course you open other flanks. We are not being sophisticated with our not, approach. We need to be sophisticated. But we're spending sophisticated. a lot of money. We, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. do, do, you, do you imagine that the money is not sufficient to get the right technology or is not being uh, judiciously used? What do you think is the, well, is the gap? Well, the, the issue is, uh, at least uh, we have, even at the National Assembly that we just listened to, they have people that uh, supervise some of these things. Um, oversight. Uh, oversight. You know, let them look at the way some of these monies are, are, are spent. Are you know, because if you if you allocate money for certain services or operations, watch, check and see how some of these things are. Uh, but when we think that, as a layman, I mean, you are the expert here. When we, we got those to Keno uh, aircraft, we were very joyous and thought that, oh, these guys are in trouble. We're going to clear them out. And as Governor Erufai said, go there and clear them out. How difficult is it to clear Before them out? Before that, you need to have very good surveillance systems. Surveillance systems that, look, this, these guys move around in uh, in, in motorcycle, I mean, long... Um, Convoys of, uh, for several kilometers. of uh, several kilometers of this. We need surveillance systems that can see all of this. Uh, we don't and need. You mean we don't we have don't need all the of entire those? army. Come on, bro. We don't need. We, the do, we don't have army. all of those. I, I don't think what we have now can achieve the, the, the kind of, uh, can solve the problems so you, you, we, we, I mean, we, you're, you're saying, right uh, maybe I watch too much of these movies. Yes. You don't think that we, uh, a general can sit in Abuja and monitor an operations in the northwest? We don't, are we not that sophisticated? That is not the issue. The issue is, we're talking about, okay, look at um, the Kaduna Airport, the rail, uh, uh, rail I mean, uh, all the operational, all, all the areas where the criminals are operating within the Kaduna state. One very good surveillance system can cover all of those, that is, maybe about 50 kilometer radius of uh, system with, uh, uh, with armed drones and so on. So a few security men seated somewhere can effectively control all, all, all right. of this. Look, but, so, so when you talk about monitor what is going on, that is a different thing. There are operational plans that will enable you to sit down and know what is going on. But the way this, op, this, this um, criminal elements operate in our, in our country, it, 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 it makes it difficult. I mean, if you do not have a very good surveillance system that will enable you to see all of this in real time and also be able to attack as, as, I mean, as early as necessary. Look at the situation in which uh, over 100 people will be taken away from a, tra a, a train station into the bush, uh, to wherever, and we, could not, we cannot find them. But if you have this surveillance system I'm talking about, you can see them even uh, while in motion, while they are being moved away. There are one and, or two so issues on. I like it's, also to get yes, clarity yes. for our viewers. Let me allow Honorable uh, Adeogun to come back into the conversation. Some of your colleagues are talking about mercenaries. In fact, the governor of Kaduna State recently was also asking that if the mercenaries are not gotten by the federal government to help in the situation, that himself and some of the Northwest governors will have to do that. How easy is it to get the mercenaries to come? And could that be a solution? Well, I'm sorry to say these. Um, I don't quite agree with the issue of mercenaries. And I'll use an analogy. It's, it's a bit funny. I mean, it's like a man is unable to make his wife pregnant and hires another man to make the wife pregnant. At the end of the day, whose wife is going to be? It's our country. It's our war. We have to take ownership of our battles and win. 
If you have mercenaries, you still have to provide for them. You still have to provide resources for them. And when they're done fighting the battle, who will maintain the peace? It's still our people. So I think at this stage, it's not about mercenaries. It's about providing for our troops, training them and equipping them to be able to do battle and win. Even the moral victory itself will strengthen them and um, improve the morale of the forces. And then they will be able to combat um, such crises, you know, in a better way. So, again, is it necessary to call for the sack of the NSA or the Minister of Defense? Would that be a solution too? I don't think that's a solution because you have to look at the underlying issues. I'm gonna give the NSA as an example. Does um, the law establishing the uh, national security agencies give the NSA power to do some of the things we expect that office to do? No. The, the office is not as strong as we perceive it is. We, we tend to equate the NSA in Nigeria with the NSA in the US. They're different, they're different entities. There are different levels of power. They have different levels of involvement. And so I think that's one area of legislation that we need to strengthen because I think it leaves a lot of gaps and it makes coordination pretty difficult. Uh, Commodore, let me ask you, same question. Do we need the mercenaries? I don't think we need them at this point in time. All we need to do is equip the armed forces, equip these various security agencies with the necessary tools they need to perform this, uh, the job. Apart from the fact that, uh, uh, apart from this, uh, the technology we're talking about, we need to beef up the manpower. And there's a ready source of manpower, that is the uh, reserve force. I mean, we have a lot of reserve, uh, retired uh, personnel that are ready to serve very ready to serve, to establish or activate, even our laws have provided for all of this. Let us activate the national, uh, the military reserve force and let them support the armed forces. For instance, in uh, some of the operational areas in the Northeast, after the armed forces have cleared certain areas, you find out that uh, um, as, as they move on, I mean, they, they, they keep leaving a, a few of them behind to hold some of those places. And at the end of the day, they've spread out so thinly that they won't be able to perform. And then the enemy, the, 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 the terrorists have an upper hand. So you don't also, So we need this, uh, maybe they need to activate the National Reserve, Military Reserve Force, so that this way we now support the, the military operation. What about those who are asking for the sack of the NSA or the Minister of Defense? That is not the issue. That's not the problem. So you agree with yes, the I agree with him. Let us provide them the necessary tools, the uh, but technology. But is there enough everything. coordination? Uh, I mean, the, the, the security agencies. I think we have better coordination right now than we've had previously. The, 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 the conflict uh, between the service chiefs and so on that we witnessed previously, and that, that's not what we're seeing right now. They are always working together and they're collaborating more to achieve... Uh, right. uh, the, uh, because objectives. we need to close now, yeah. I'd like a 30 seconds um, uh, final thought from both of you. First, and on this question, quickly, please. My, my question here will be the notion of fifth columnist within the security agency. Is it a major problem, and how can it be solved? Just 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it, it's real, I would say, because, um, first of all, you need to ensure that all the service, all the personnel working with you are on the same page with you. You need to service them properly. I mean, the, all the requirements, things they need to operate effectively. The moment you cannot provide them with their welfare needs, the equipment and everything, the training required, of course, you start having some of them right. against, against you. Honorable, your, your final thought in 30 seconds. The issue of fifth columnist in the security agency, is it a major problem? You know, um, just members of the armed forces or security agencies actually passing information back. I mean, you had a recent case of people being, uh, you know, arrested or ran Kaduna or the um, Kaduna Abuja Expressway um, that had about 60 million error that, you know, that's supposed to be in for ransom. How did they get it? So they definitely have, you know, they have to keep calling names with the security forces. Honorable Adi Jorade a member of uh, the House of Representatives, Vice Chairman of the Intelligence Committee. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us tonight. And a retired military officer, Air Commodore Darlington Abdullahi. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.